Welcome to Beyond Death, where we examine near-death experiences from people who say they died, visited the other side, and came back. Today's NDE comes to us from Linda, who describes seeing the gates of heaven and meeting an angel during her near-death experience. Linda further tells about having a vision of the rapture. Let's get into it. Dear Beyond Death, I have two experiences that I would love to share and I hope you will narrate it. I also hope it isn't too lengthy. I tried to shorten it as much as I could. Please do not share my last name or contact details. Thank you. Linda. Hi. My name is Linda. Throughout most of my life, I've had many dreams and experiences. These are the two most profound ones in my life. A near-death experience and a vision. I hope you will narrate both of them in your video. I always believed faithfully in Jesus since childhood, learning from my parents and Sunday school. Over time I've come to realize that these experiences were gifts from God. Until recently, I have told them to very few people. I didn't want to be thought of as crazy, especially in the tough school where I grew up. I knew what I experienced was real. I never told anyone about my experiences until recently and never knew there were many others with experiences. Often, I could feel something pulling me away from my body. Sometimes, this would happen several times a night. On these occasions, I would lie in my bed wide awake and feel myself leaving my body. Looking back, I was too young to know about asthma or what the medications were that my mother used to give me. I would stop breathing and leave my body multiple times, then fight to come back and breathe. Before my 12th birthday, my mother passed away from cancer after battling it for over a year. I was very scared of God taking her away from us, but somehow knew that he was going to take her. At 12 years old, and not long after her death, and still grieving, I had the most wonderful near-death experience. One night shortly after laying down in bed, and still wide awake, I started feeling my body going into full paralysis. No matter how hard I struggled, I couldn't move a muscle or even utter so much as a whisper. It was scary. I felt myself leaving my body, ascending upwards into the sky and into a very long, dark tunnel. There was a pinpoint light at the end of it, and I felt like I was traveling at the speed of light. I saw many tiny orbs of lights passing by very quickly and was curious about them. So as my focus turned from the light to my side, I slowed right down almost to a stop. I saw that these orbs were the souls of other people also headed through the tunnel. I could see their faces and bodies. They were not completely solid as I could almost see right through them if it weren't for light enveloping them. I turned my focus to look ahead and, in a moment, I reached the bright white light emerging from the tunnel. I found a beautiful shiny path and floated along it, not walking. In the distance I saw a gigantic square structure at the end of the path. Meanwhile, the souls of many people were quickly passing me as I was slower than they, taking in as much of the beauty as I could see. Around me this path led through such amazingly beautiful, vibrant, green, grassy pasture, much greener than I'd ever seen on earth. Everything was so brightly lit everywhere, emanating from this big structure in the distance. The light left no shadows wherever I looked, all being so bright and beautiful beyond imagination. As I was nearing the structure at the path's end, I saw a burning bush to my right in the pasture, just off the path. Such an amazing fire, yet the fire wasn't consuming it. My attention then turned ahead of me, and I saw the most beautiful flowers with many different vibrant colors. Floating further, I eventually focused directly at the square structure. It was as if hovering in midair, unmoving. Drawing closer, I saw the base of it had so many of the hugest, purest, and brightest gemstones of many different colors, piled one on top of another, all the way around. I had never seen anything like it in my life, but saw a few favorites. I don't remember how many were in height or depth, but each stone was so big it had to have weighed many, many tons and fit perfectly all around. Looking upwards, I realized that the walls above these gemstones were extremely high and wide. I could literally feel that no evil could penetrate this entire place. 
It gave me a great feeling of calmness, safety, and the purest of love emanating everywhere. The walls were a shiny yellow gold color. As I came closer, I was approaching one corner of it where I could see three gates on each side, all spaced very far apart. I came around to one side of the structure and up to one of the gates that was ajar. None of the gates were open more than about a 45 degree angle. The gate looked like the brightest, whitest, hugest, shiniest pearl that I'd ever seen. I thought at the time it was polished marble. There's nothing like it on earth. I stopped at the entrance in the doorway as many souls of others were still passing me by entering through the gate. The walls and gate were all so very thick. I looked down at the floor inside and it looked like pure thick glass, so shiny, not reflective, but was too thick to see through it. This was truly home in every sense. Although I briefly but closely examined all these things, I was not allowed to touch it because it was holy. Standing in the gate entrance, I instantly knew that Jesus was inside around the corner to my right, even though I couldn't see or hear him. I felt like I wanted so badly to cry because I wasn't ready to die and leave my dad and sister alone on earth. If I entered, I knew I couldn't come back and would have to stay. While up there, I knew everything that I could ever wish to know about in my life on earth. I could not cry or even shed a tear. Something held it back. There are no tears or unhappiness in heaven, only love and joy. Suddenly, the angel of the gate appeared inside, of whom I knew while I was there. But everything I knew was forgotten upon returning to my body later. I don't remember if angels have a gender designation. Through the angel, I understood that we know who everyone is, even every angel that was ever created at the beginning of time, because God created all of us then, before eventually being sent to our bodies forming in our mother's wombs. We were all created at the same time. In the beginning, the angel smiled, and I felt an immediate peace and calmness. I no longer felt I wanted to cry. The angel let me come back as it wasn't my time, but not before telepathically telling me something. I returned with great sadness and mourning in my heart for my sister. I don't remember what the angel said to me and didn't understand why I was mourning for her until recently. That part I am keeping private. I learned that in heaven we all communicate telepathically as it bypasses any language barriers we have here that started at the Tower of Babel. The direction you go depends on which way your eyes are focused. And while up there we know and remember everything whereas in life we were not meant to remember. It all has to do with freedom of choice. Outside of our body, nothing is measured in time. Time was created by man, and only used in this life. When I came back to my body, I was gasping for air and choking to breathe again. The feeling I had for weeks, maybe months afterwards, was of great euphoria and ecstatic joy. It's beyond words to describe. I found out years later, while reading the Bible, that this place was not just heaven, but New Jerusalem. I am so grateful to Jesus for giving me a glimpse of home. Over the years, I've had many, sometimes nightmarish, dreams concerning the end times, more specifically, the tribulation, the last days. Most were very horrendous and felt so unreal. Now they are unfolding before my eyes. Everything I experienced and dreamt is written in the Bible, in the books of Daniel and Revelation. I didn't understand then, why God was showing me all these things or what I was supposed to do with this information. In my twenties, my life was spiraling downward. I was married to a controlling, manipulative, alcohol and drug using, wife abuser. When I was 25 years old, I had a vision one morning. Years later, I read the Bible and believe it may be the rapture. I was lying in bed awake when suddenly I could literally feel a huge but loving, warm hand reached through my ribs and into my chest. I felt each finger wrap entirely around my heart. I knew God gently held my heart and stilled it. I was immediately whisked away from my body. I found myself in my home city where I grew up, walking along the road behind my parents' home. The road was beside a knoll that separated the road from the back lane, located beside a row of houses. 
I saw a new sidewalk on the knoll, where there was never one before. I must note that the following summer when I came to visit my parents, this new sidewalk had just been put in. I kept walking and soon after, I saw my dad walking down the back lane on the other side of the knoll. He was slightly stooped over and had a chair with him in which he'd walk a short distance before sitting down, repeatedly. This road normally had fairly heavy traffic but this day, there were no vehicles anywhere. I heard a great commotion and my attention turned to the sky. After a period of darkness, perhaps it was dark clouds, there was a great but frightening thundering and lightning followed by one long monotone sound of a trumpet, so deafeningly loud it could wake up the dead and burst your eardrums, yet it didn't hurt mine. Then the sky split open down the middle, and the sky rolled open like a scroll, each rolling its own way to the north and south. In that opening was the whitest, brightest light shining through, more and more as it opened up. The light was so bright, it would normally be blinding, but it didn't blind me. In that light, I could make out a figure of a man in the distance and knew exactly who it was. My attention turned back to my dad again, and I shouted very loudly, Jesus is here, it's judgment day, were my exact words. My dad neither heard nor saw me. Later in life, he had dementia, was legally blind and almost completely deaf and walked with a walker before he passed away. I then noticed along the road and back lane that there were a couple of people running and hiding in fear, holding armfuls of valuables. That disturbed me greatly that they were running away and hiding from our loving Jesus. I couldn't understand at the time. My attention again turned back to the sky ahead of me as I saw the souls of deceased people and then the living being caught up into the sky with me. In the twinkling of an eye, I was in front of Jesus. He wore a full-length, bright, pure white robe with something tied around his waist. He had the most welcoming, friendliest and gentlest loving and smiling face ever. He had shoulder-length dark-colored hair, blue-green eyes, and his skin tone was like a Palestinian. My gaze went down to his open arms and then to his hands where I saw the holes in his palms from the crucifixion. I gazed down to one foot that was partly showing out from his robe, the other hidden behind it, and the hole was still there too, in the arch. To Jesus' left side was a woman, who I believed to be Mary, dressed in a beautiful, long, baby blue robe along with a shawl, covering her long, dark hair, shoulders, and down her sides. I can't say which Mary she was. I could feel the joy and love emanating everywhere. My attention next turned to my side, where all the people were gathered, and I joined them. I saw my mother who had passed away when I was young. She was changed and looked so beautiful and far younger than when she died, smiling and so happy. I stood beside her as we gathered together to sing a new song. That's where it ended and I returned to my body, gasping and choking to breathe air. My feeling of excessive euphoria and joy lasted a long time perhaps weeks. I don't remember. To those who are in need or desperation, these things I do know. Put all your trust and faith in Jesus. He will never fail you. He comes and raises us up in the lowest moments of our lives. He freely gives forgiveness, strength to endure, love, peace and joy to those who believe in Him. Pray and ask for it. We are saved by grace through faith. Whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Notes from Beyond Death Thank you, Linda, for sending in your near-death experience, as well as your vision of the rapture. I myself find them both to be comforting. Now, and it's sad I have to say this, but there is always someone that wants to bring race into any mention of Jesus. I don't care if Jesus was white, black, purple, or a combination of the rainbow colors. He is Jesus, and if you need to define him by a race, then you are doing Christianity wrong. Please seek help. Until next time, stay blessed.